All right, guys, on this snowy winter day, we're going to talk about the pros, the cons, and ultimately, is the slip joint knife dead? And like I said, um, and so without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and the Instagram. The support does mean a ton. Now, let's talk about the slip joints. Now, I've recently heard, and the reason why I wanted to make this video is through the grapevine, I recently heard people, and I think it's kind of just generally a notion that people think that, you know, oh, slip joints are basically dead and you should only own a slip joint if that's all your, you know, jurisdiction or country or county or whatever allows you to own for legal purposes but today I wanted to talk about some serious pros to this system and we'll of course cover cons and kind of just use experience on the slip joint knife as a whole and ultimately talk about why I don't think this knife system or this kind of non-locking mechanism is dead because we can even see nowadays um, a kind of a rebirth of neo vintage blades coming out where they you know use titanium high-end steels but there's still slip joints still nail nicks very much inspired by old school designs so let's talk about some of the pros to the slip joint at first now a lot of people just see this as a non-locking mechanism and might write it off but the two biggest pros to the slip joint mechanism are one its simplicity and two its size so this is an extremely simple simple system where you basically just have spring bars in the back of your knife usually pinned at a central point like this that allow when the knife is open or closed to give some serious resistance so you guys can see there hopefully by a little guy sticking up right there um, they kind of give resistance to a portion milled into the tang of your blade or whatever tool you're using. So what this means is that it's an extremely simple mechanism to use. And because of its simplicity, that's why it's on some of the oldest knives in general. And because of its simplicity, it can be on cheaply manufactured knives. So not only is this a cheap system to make, it's simple, it's easy, and it's pretty bomb proof as a whole. Once again, a lot of your older knives not only used the system because it was easy, but a lot of those older knives are still around because this system is very hard to go wrong with, especially because you have, for what this is, a very thick, very overbuilt spring bar in the back. So, so long as that doesn't become damaged, which under normal operation it never would be, um, this knife is going to last basically indefinitely, at least with that type of non-locking system. Now, like I said, the other thing that is an advantage to the slip joint is that because there's no you know lock bar sliding into place there's no lock bars really falling into place there's nothing for you to depress to unlock the knife these are extremely um, thin or extremely compact non-locking mechanisms so not only that too you'll see this in a lot of um, kind of multi-bladed or multi-tool uh, designs where you'll see um, hopefully with this locking bar this one up on the top here you'll see that uh, this all if I get this guy out here uses this locking bar hopefully the video kind of shows that it. it's not sticking up too much but this all right here uses this locking bar and you'll see that the blade itself the main blade uses the same locking bar now it does lift it up a little bit more so it's a little bit easier to see but you can see that um, on a lot of tools and like i said multi-bladed tools with slip joint capacity you know blades on the left side and on the right side can use the same exact locking bar or non-locking bar i should say and achieve the same effect so this makes it a really compact easy design to have multi-tools or multi-bladed tools so that is another big draw and a big reason why you will see um, this design with things like victorinoxes or great eastern cutlery with their different multi-bladed tools so those are some of the biggest pros to the slip joint. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, of course this thing doesn't... So the last pro, of course, to the slip joint is its legality. A lot of places, especially non-American or non-US countries, will uh, or have bans on locking blades because they see knives that lock as dangerous, even though fixed blades are equally as dangerous, but we won't go there in this video. Um, 
so they put them they put like uh, laws and rules and so of course the nice thing about a non-locking blade a good solid non-locking blade is that it is legal in many places now that is the primary argument that is being made at least that i'm addressing is that you know you should only own one if you're in that circumstance but i think there's a lot of good justification to owning slip joints in other ways now of course there is always that kind of pressing factor that there is nothing stopping this blade from closing in on your fingers and some lock bars are or non-locking bars are and some spring bars for instance are not as strong as others luckily victorinox you can see i'm really having to put a lot of pressure on this to get it to close in so a lot of your higher quality um, tools are going to have stronger spring bars and they're going to be a lot harder to depress so other things you can do if you are concerned truly about the blade folding in on your fingers. One thing that I have talked about in previous videos when reviewing um, Victorinoxes is that you can, and I'm certainly not the first person to find this out, but you can take uh, things like brass wire, copper wire, or other different types of malleable metal wire, and you can bend them around the kind of uh, back point on the handle and bend it around the back of the knife and then curve it over the blade so that you essentially create a locking bar or a lock bar for your blade then it will not close under any circumstance now granted it is a little bit cumbersome and it is like essentially an accessory you have to carry so it's a disadvantage in that regard but if you do really need that extra locking capacity you can easily make something like that and it'll work across a wide variety of different blades so long as you form it to the back of the handle and it goes around the blade so anyways that is something that you can do to help mitigate the risk of cutting yourself or having that failure you know of the blade coming back in on you so that is something to keep in mind and of course that is definitely the biggest con to the to the slip joint knife as a whole there is no locking mechanism officially and so therefore it can be inherently dangerous but it's not really something that i think is as big of a deal as most people make it even if you know and even with a little bit of experience and time, you know, the biggest thing that you don't want to do with a slip joint is, you know, have your thumb up on the blade and pushing it through material. But even that can be mitigated because I've done a lot of carving with things like Victorinoxes and you'll get a feel for the resistance. You know, when you're cutting through a piece of wood, you'll, you know, feel the resistance, resistance, resistance. And then when it breaks through and you've cut through the material, that resistance, you know, of course stops. And so you'll know that, you know, you're putting pressure, 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 stop you know and so you understand that you know you put this much pressure in in and then you let off right before it cuts through so you know things can be done and you can learn it through feel so it's not too big of a deal to have um your thumb it's not too big of a deal to have your you know thumb up on the blade just probably in the beginning don't do it and then as you get more comfortable and you feel that resistance of you know cutting through materials more and more you get comfortable with it uh, certainly so anyways you know the biggest advantage i think outside of the the pros that i already mentioned uh, with slip joints and i think the reason why slip joints are kind of coming back is this rebirth that a lot of the oldest knives uh, at least folding knives or pocket knives that we have in human history are slip jointed blades and so there's this rebirth of new old school styled blades and also old school blades themselves out there that you know if you just write off slip joints as an old outdated or antiquated mechanism uh, you know you really uh, miss out on a lot of unique tools that are very historical or have historical roots so ultimately i think that there's a lot of good in these slip jointed blades of course there are victorinoxes but you know great eastern cutlery i think makes a ton of really awesome you know vintage styled blades that are totally worth checking out and of course there are many others out there uh, to this day another thing i do definitely recommend if you decide to pocket carry any of your slip jointed blades is checking out getting a uh, pocket slip these guys i don't have like a real specific maker but i really like having a nice pocket slip because once again a lot of these knives um, you know are 
more classy and you don't want to get them scratched up, dinged up, and scraped up. So having a little pocket slip like this, and then if you can, or, you know, I put my lanyard on the actual pocket slip because not all traditional or vintage knives have a lanyard. Like this, you know, Victorinox is kind of nice because it has a lanyard loop, but a lot of traditional ones don't. So I put a little lanyard on the actual pocket slip itself. So that way when it's in my pocket and I'm finding it, you know, I can find that little lanyard, pull it out, you know, just dump the knife, just dump the knife out and then you know you have your pot then you have your knife now of course this isn't any tactical quick draw you know fast thing this is a far cry from an automatic but once again you know you don't necessarily need that per se especially if you're thinking about carrying a you know uh slip joint blade so would recommend a pocket slip um they do exist just uh, google pocket slips and you'll find leather canvas different materials out there so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this video and ultimately to conclude you know the pockets the slip joint blade is not dead by any means in fact it's actually seeing somewhat of a rebirth because people are making you know neo vintage blades out there that you know have that higher quality steels higher quality handle materials but made in traditional styling so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out